So you obviously star in this movie, but you also wrote and produced it. How did you want to up the ante for Venom 2, for the second Venom? Well, it's a collaborative sport, you know, in many aspects. So after the first one had finished, we watched how we watched with bated breath to see how how it how it was it was taken by their audiences and the critics. And critics didn't really like it so much, but the audience did respond. And we looked at what they were responding to and also what we were passionate about. And some of the things that they loved were the things that we intrinsically knew we wanted in the first one. So we started with that. More Eddie and, and Venom. We want to go on a journey with them. We want to see whether they develop because it's not. It's not just, you know, man is attacked by a parasite, you know, thinks he has a tropical disease and he's dying and then he's not. He's got a really friendly <laughs> big alien that lives in him, but it's also really dangerous. So what happens next? You know, so I want to know more about that. Um, so we went for the odd couple, you know, like a married couple who are, not, you know, flatmates that are not getting on well at all. And, uh, and you know, they have very different ideas of, and opinions on the world and they're rubbing against each other in a very <laughs> small apartment. And like a lovers, you know, two two like lovers arguing, or a married couple arguing, or you know, two roommates, whatever. They, they're kind of asexual characters that you know are forced to live with one another, you know. And um, and then the other side, we 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 wanted to mirror that once we found this character that was, which is obvious, but at, at the time it wasn't. It was connected so intrinsically to Cletus, as well, which mirrored the you know the relationships, and then there's Annie and Dan as well. So we knew that there was this was a love story. But we also had to bring carnage out as well. So it was it was then trying to work out how do we how do we best fit that and put that together in in a, in a, in a ninety minute ride. How did you sort of imagine? I mean, carnage obviously existed in the comics, but how did you sort of imagine how carnage would sort of manifest on on screen? Carnage had to be different to Venom. Venom was very uh, present as a robust uh, sort of you know uh, linebacker. Or, you know. <laughs> He's present, he's direct, he's straight, he does what it says on the tin, he's a bit of a boulder, you know, he moves, mm -hmm. he's unstoppable, he's seven foot nine. He's the manifestation of, you know, self-will run riot. He just does what he will do. Carnage, on the other hand, had an element of chaos being coming from Cletus Cassidy and being from the mind of a psychopath, symbiotic almost immediately. The, the, the This man has formlessness. They can think chaotically and he can, you know, they're literally in the comic books, you know, Carnage can turn to mist. He can run into the internet with his fingers and become wires. He can like, shapeshift in a way that's uh, much more like the roots of a plant. This nemesis has a functionality and an aesthetic, which is very, very different. Although they, you know, they both have jaws with teeth and tongues and eyes. They manifest differently and, it, and, and they have to have some kind of collusion with their host and they're an externalized volition physically uh, of the host that they're in, I think. All I ever wanted in this world is carnage. You could just say, I'm happy for you. That was going to be us. I am happy for you. No! God, I'm so sorry. Not sorry! This dude needs some serious couples counseling. 